My name is Yasser, I'm a senior lecturer in pharmacy practice and specialist antimicrobial pharmacist. I've been the director of Micropharm for the past two years now and over the past two years I've had the opportunity to train over 1,000 trainee pharmacists and here are my top tips in preparation for the registration assessment. The first thing that you have to do is familiarize yourself with the GPHC registration assessment framework. This is available on the GPHC website and it gives you an idea of what they're going to assess within the registration assessment. Also make the most of free resources. I have a Microfarm Telegram group which I'll put in the description box below. I also provide several free webinars throughout the years these will be webinars that I'll go through practice questions or I'll go through clinical content. So sign up to all of the free webinars that I'm hosting. I also have an entire syllabus in collaboration with Morph Training, which is completely free to attend. And we go through a lot of the therapeutic areas that are assessed in the GPHC registration assessment. I also have a free mailing list, which you can sign up to on www.microfarm.org and I send out a free pharmacology cheat sheet every Sunday. My next piece of advice is starting calculations early. I recommend starting calculations at the start of your trainee year and at least practicing 20 calculation questions weekly, which will make you more familiar for the calculations paper in the GPHC registration assessment. My next piece of advice is familiarizing yourself with feedback from previous sittings. So the GPHC upload feedback on their website for common mistakes that people make in previous sittings. And this is where you can capitalize on this and ensure that you don't make similar mistakes in your assessment. Another tip I have is ensuring that you're familiar with the calculators that you can use in the assessment because all calculators are different. Sometimes the keys are in different parts of the calculator. So practice using the calculator that you have to use in the registration assessment early on. On the Microfarm Instagram page, I upload daily quiz questions. Make sure you practice these daily and this will make you more familiar with the content for the registration assessment. If you struggle with making notes or you spend a lot of time making notes, I have pre-made notes available for you on the Microfarm website. These are pre-prepared, they're up-to-date study guides to help prepare you for the registration assessment. Another tip that I have is make sure that you spend the majority of your time revising, targeting the high rating therapeutic areas. There are four high rating therapeutic areas for the GPHC registration assessment. These include the cardiovascular system, the nervous system, infection and endocrine system. The high weighting therapeutic areas make up 60 to 70% of the registration assessment. That's why it's particularly important to pay close attention to these therapeutic areas. A common mistake that I see trainee pharmacists make is they try to start the first three or four months by targeting the low rating therapeutic areas. And this can waste a lot of your time. So make sure you prioritize high weighting therapeutic areas first, and then you can start to focus on medium and low rating therapeutic areas. Your main aim is to know the high rating therapeutic areas extremely well, because this is where you're going to make up the most marks in the GPHC registration assessment. So let's look at common mistakes that people make in the registration assessment that are provided to us by the GPHC. The GPHC states that in the November 2021 assessment sitting, Many people made the mistake of not being able to know the difference between red flag symptoms and symptoms that are normally associated with the condition. Let's say, for example, a child presents with chickenpox in a community pharmacy setting and the child has a fever. That fever will be associated with the chickenpox and is not a red flag. It's something that can be managed in a community pharmacy setting. However, many people inappropriately refer this patient on, considering the fever to be a red flag. However, when they were presented with patients with symptoms that could indicate sepsis, they were unable to identify the importance of referring these patients on and identifying that this is time critical. The GPHC also stated that many people were unable to identify the difference between an adverse drug allergy to a medication and a side effect to a medication. And one 
of the examples that they provide, which is a common mistake that happens in practice, is not being able to identify if a patient is allergic to penicillin or they have had a side effect that's associated with the penicillin that would not indicate an allergy. So it's particularly important to know the difference between the two. If you want more tips for the GPH2 registration assessment, be sure to follow the Microfarm Instagram page and the Microfarm TikTok page, and be sure to attend all the webinars that are available via Microfarm. I hope you found this video useful, and if you did, please drop a like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.